for this event. Today our first guests are Don Deloach, President and CEO of Infobright, and we're excited to have Brenna Berman, who's the CIO of the City of Chicago. Our goal today is really to talk about the council and what its objectives are. It's really exciting that the city and a lot of uh, technology companies have come together to really work on building an IoT council for all of the Midwest. So today what we've got is we have uh, two really great people who are going to talk about what our objectives are and how we're going to build this because as the IoT, the Internet of Things grows, we need a lot of folks to really come together and show how the Midwest is really going to be this epic center for all the things that we are going to do. So now I thought what we're going to do is kind of kick it off and uh, I think we have two great guests here who are going to start and which one of you wants to start? Brenna, Don, which one of you want to kick it off? I Brenna? Think. All right, why don't you start for us? Um, so Peggy, this is, this, as you said, is really exciting. Um, the city is very excited to be, um, and I'm very excited to be co-chairing this ITA council where we want to focus on how the IoT can really empower businesses to embrace innovative technologies to change their business model, to drive economic development for the city, to focus on how residents and businesses can embrace new technologies um, to grow innovation, to grow their businesses, and to change how the city and the Midwest is really doing things. We think that um, Chicago can be the leader in that. So when we look at all this, we've put together this really great committee of membership. Yes. Talk a little bit about this first membership that you've mm -hmm. put together in this to, you've got this council and advisory board. Talk right. a little bit about that board you put together. So the diversity of the membership is really the key. So um, there's uh, membership from the consulting space with Accenture, there's membership from telecom, from manufacturing, from the security space, from the, um, from the healthcare space, the um, automotive space, and I think that's really telling both about the importance and breadth of the impact of IoT and the importance and breadth of and depth of importance of the Midwest in this movement. So IoT is really going to impact every aspect of our lives and of business, and the Midwest has a diverse um, economic foundation that really is what's going to position us to take the lead in this space, and the council reflects that. And I think what's really incredible is the um, ability that this council has to come forward and take a leadership role, and I'm really excited that all of these people have, you know, taken a seat at the table to bring their skills to bear. So it's that diversity I'm excited about. And I think that's exciting, but why now? When we mm -hmm. talk about the Internet of Things, right. it, it seems like it's got all this buzz. Why now, and what are we doing with the, what we call the thing about it all? Why right. is the Internet of Things now? Um, I think now because the the technology is ready, it's not um, you know it's not just demos anymore. It's not just pie in the sky. The technology is really available, and we're starting to use it. Um, you know, it's not just you know the wearables are real. Many of us have them, and the technology is um, really starting to impact industry today. So it's important now because it's real, and we think that um, you know time is of the essence. We need to get moving fast, and the biggest mistake I think that we could make here in Chicago is not to move as quickly as possible to embrace it. So when we look at all of these things, can you give us some really good examples of what you guys think, you know, between the two of you, of what are the IoT initiatives Chicago is going to be doing that's going to make this unique compared to what we see in other places? But I think Chicago is unique in its own way and can do a lot of things that other areas can't do. Um, so, before giving you a specific example, I think what's going to make Chicago unique is that you're going to see examples come about in, you know, almost every single industry, right? From automotive to healthcare to finance to logistics and, you know, trucking, et cetera. Um, you're going to see IoT taking hold across the board, where many cities are only going to have strength in one or two areas. Um, so we're going to bring our, you know, historical strength and ability to apply technologies in every industry, um, and you're going to start to see those examples grow 
um, you know, really in the coming months in every single one of those industries. So I think that's actually what's going to be exciting. In my own world, you're starting to see, you know, you know, which is city government, you're starting to see IoT take place, you know, just with the sensors that we have out in the cities. We use them, you know, to learn about the city and make better governing decisions, you know, really on a daily basis. We use them to understand, you know, the health of the lake and how we manage that resource on behalf of the residents of Chicago. We use them to understand, you know, the problems that we're having with the challenges that we're having with noise around the airports. Um, so sensors are changing how we manage the city at a micro level, um, and that's making us a better, more efficient government. So in my world, that's what's going on. So are we talking less about just services, but increasing better business bottom line that the city's seeing from this, that it's making us more efficient, mm -hmm. more productive, enhancing the services and and the things we're providing for both the businesses and the citizens is what we're doing. Yes, for us it's changing how we do business um, and making us more efficient and effective and giving us better information um, to make better decisions, you know, day to day. Um, and Don, you're probably seeing examples coming from other industries, you know, as we speak. Uh, sure. Um, I mean, I, I think the industry that's probably the, the farthest out front is the industrial mm -hmm. um, complex, if you will. And, and that's probably because the ROI is the most obvious and there are no real impediments to those investments. So it, it, it behooves somebody who's building capital equipment that would be put into a McDonald's or into a home or whatever to, to instrument that and change how they deliver that, creates stickiness for the users, it, it, it creates a, a better uh, product life cycle for the product manufacturer. So, so that's where we're starting to see things early on. But there's all kinds of other evidence. As you know more than anybody, if you look at things like, for example, the automotive industry, you know, it's not like, it's not like we have driverless cars today, but they're, they're getting a lot closer to it in terms of the type of the, the role automation plays in a car. It's almost like the, we don't, you know, planes don't fly themselves, but they kind of do, but you have to have a pilot in the cockpit. We're getting more and more towards having the pilot in the cockpit of the car as that technology advances, and yet there are impediments to getting all the way down the road that will have to be overcome. We all know that you can have a driverless car right now, but, but the infrastructure isn't in place to support that yet, and the laws and the overall you know, regulatory structure has to adapt. A lot of that is also true in healthcare. There's some unbelievable things that are happening in terms of IoT-enabled healthcare initiatives that have far-reaching implications, but we have a ways to go. And I think that part of what my hope for the council is, is while we recognize these are, these are still the early days of the Internet of Things, that there are so many changes that will take place as this technology matures, but if we have a very deliberate effort as a, collectively as a group to try to foster that evolution in a deliberate and, and thoughtful way, we can start to address some of the issues like, like governance and, and ownership of data and privacy and, and some of the policy matters as well as doing things to make it easier for businesses and, and citizens alike to embrace IoT to, for, the, for the benefit of all. So what are we doing? Are we trying to say we want to be unique to what we do here in the States? Do we want to be unique to how things or what's happening in other countries? What's the overall objective of what we're doing here in Chicago and the Midwest? Because if you talk about infrastructure and you think things have moved a little bit faster uh, overseas, so they're doing things a little bit, they have regulations that make things move a lot faster. Do we want to kind of follow that model with what we're doing here? Are there examples that you can give us that you say we want to kind of follow that or, or do we want to be completely unique for what the Chicago and the Midwest is doing? Um, yeah, it's an interesting question and, and, and there's sort of a competitive nature inside of all of us that says, you know, we want to be unique and, and, and far and above anybody else, but in reality, I think the real answer is we want to do what's right for Chicago and the Midwest and, and, and have this be the very best we can be. And I think if that's the view we take, then we also applaud places like New York or Austin or whoever who take similar initiatives. The fact of the matter is we're out in front now in North America in terms of taking these steps, 
but but I certainly would encourage uh, other regions to do the same thing. I think we're all better off the more broadly people embrace this technology and confront the issues that are associated with it. But but it is clear that we've taken some very deliberate steps, and, and certainly the city of Chicago has had a leadership position in terms of doing what they've done, like with the with the portal and, and the amount of information that they're they're producing and exposing. Um, so yeah, we want to be out in front, but we care less about being out in front than we do doing the right things for the region and, and hope that other regions would follow suit. There's quite a bit that we can learn, especially from the cities in Europe and in Asia that are trying to answer some of the same difficult questions that we've just talked about a moment ago about sustainability and the proper security structures and legislative structures that can support advancements of IoT initiatives. Um, but you know, the U.S. is its very own, um, you know, climate, et cetera, so we're going to have to answer those questions for ourselves so we can take lessons from overseas, but we're going to have to apply them here. And but the fact remains that you know, we do live in a global competitive climate, and taking on, you know, taking on the mantle or the race around IoT innovation is one of the ways that Chicago is going to remain competitive in the global race for um, attracting talent in terms of, you know, job talent, et cetera, and one of the ways that will remain competitive in terms of attracting global headquarters, et cetera. So while around, you know, IoT advancement itself, it is really important for us to remain collaborative with other cities. It's also one way that Chicago as a city is going to remain competitive in the global marketplace. So when you look at all the things we're trying to do, what specifically, you know, is are we trying to champion with the IoT Council right now? You know, are we trying to look at it in one vertical way to say we want to be the best or we want to be a horizontal expert as a council or we want to get all kinds of technology companies to come here and say we want to be a part of Chicago in the Midwest effort and say we can be good at many things like we talked about the connected car and the connected infrastructure and then in, in IoT and industrial ways. What are you trying to accomplish then to get people excited about what Chicago has to bring? Um, I think it is a couple of things. I think one, there is a long, um, or there's a strong need right now to create understanding around what the IoT is, and that will create the environment that we need to answer those difficult questions we've been talking about, because until people understand what the IoT is and the benefits that it can bring both to business and to individuals, um, it's there's going to be too many questions to actually create the frameworks around legislation and security that we need. So one goal of the IoT Council is to do things like this webinar to, to educate consumers and residents of the city and companies around what IoT is and the benefits of it. Um, beyond that, I do think we have um, designs on making Chicago and the Midwest a very, um, IoT-friendly environment, maybe that's the right way to talk about it, that if there is a um, an innovative inventor or entrepreneur who is thinking about starting a company or perhaps a startup that has its roots somewhere else but has outgrown its current home and they're looking around, frankly, the world because this is a global economy and they're looking for the place that is friendliest to grow their IoT-enabled business, I want Chicago to be on the top of their list. And there's certain things that Don's already talked about, most of them, that are going to be on their list of where, you know, where an IoT business can grow and flourish, and it's going to be, you know, certain policies that support their growth, um, certain skill sets that they're going to be looking to hire, et cetera, and I want them to find all of those things here in Chicago and more broadly in the Midwest. And the council's coming together to talk about how we make sure those things are growing and flourishing here. So do you have the support of both the, the politicians, you know, everybody that's around it to make this happen, mm -hmm. other technology firms that are already based here, other businesses, are they really supporting this both in the short term and the long term when we look at this? 
I think we're starting to. So for some, it's absolutely yes. We have you know startups here in Chicago that are squarely IoT companies. We have incubators here that are focused on this space already, who would stand up strongly and say, you know, yes, I'm an IoT company. I want other IoT companies here to form a stronger ecosystem. Um, we have you know very strong leadership in Mayor Emanuel and his administration. Um, there are other you know political legislative structures that I think just don't know enough yet, and we need to work towards educating them to the benefits of this. So they're certainly not saying no. I think they just don't know enough yet and don't even know that we're asking the question that we need their support. So there's some lobbying to do just to get them in the boat. Um, so there's work to do, but I think in general we're starting with a really solid foundation with companies that are already here and with uh, leadership from the Emanuel administration. Yeah. And, and what I would add to that is um, as evidence of what Brennan just talked about, when we announced the council, um, you know, but basically about eight weeks ago, in the in the wake of that, in the in the two to three weeks after that, we've had about 45 companies come forward wanting to be involved, and that's a pretty sure sign that this interest goes beyond just a few people. You know, it's it's not like four guys and a dog, you know, trying to hatch a new idea. It's 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 definitely got momentum. And you can just, the, the, the excitement about it is, is palpable in the rooms when we're talking about it. So I think that, I, I think this definitely does have good momentum. Well, you know, it's exciting. When we do a webinar, we want all anyone listening in to, to put up questions. And we've already got a question already from one of the uh, folks listening. And Brian out there said a question, and he's curious, and he wants to know what other cities in North America are doing something like this? Because that's important, and I think that's a great question to ask. Are you seeing other cities getting involved in North America, you know, trying to initiate this? Uh, yeah, Brian, great question. Thanks. Um, I know I actually had a great conversation in New York a couple of weeks ago, um, and it's clear that they're trying to ramp up some efforts, and, and I certainly applaud them for doing that. Brenna, I know you've had other exposure as um, well. San Francisco has, um, and I don't know if it's called an IoT Council, I'm probably getting the name wrong, but San Francisco has a strong focus on this as well. Um, and, and I know as a CIO in Chicago, I, I partner and have conversations with other CIOs in certainly large cities that are focused on how IoT can change certainly the business of their city, too. Um, so the big ones, I think, are New York and San Francisco in the U.S. Well, the questions are popping in so fast, I'm not sure we're going to get through them all, but Maria has a question, too, and she wants to know, are there plans to establish other committees? I mean, you've already got a few of them. We've talked about, we should talk about the few that you've already established that are subcommittees of the main committee. Why don't you talk about those, but then talk about if you have other plans with those. Um, sure. So, yeah, what, yeah, that's a good point. Let's start with the committees we already have. Um, are, are, we, we, we started out with a list of like you know seven or eight different committee ideas and things that the council would work on, and and part of our first meeting was trying to prioritize those and narrow it into what would be actionable, and we came up with three committees: the inventory committee, the PR and communications committee, and the capital committee. And the the goals of those are basically to uh, the inventory committee is really to take stock in where we are today. So. We know we want to. We know we want to travel down the road. So we need to start by figuring out where are we and what road are we traveling down. So uh, we're looking at the the companies in the Midwest that are IoT companies. We're looking at companies in the Midwest that are implementing IoT and trying to learn from those successes and or those failures. As a matter of fact, um, and then from a PR and communications standpoint, we want to tell the the, the Midwest IoT story. We want to talk about. What, what, are we, what are we learning from the inventory? Who's doing this? What, what are the great stories that need to be told so that we can begin to develop culturally this whole theme around IoT in the Midwest? Um, and obviously, Peggy, you, you're familiar with that committee as you headed up. Uh, and I, I failed to mention Jim Ganyard, the former CEO of Smart Signals, heading up the inventory committee. And then Matt, Matt Nicklin, who's the head of uh, investment banking at First Analysis, is heading up the capital committee. And that's really designed to draw attention to capital focused on Internet of Things and really use Chicago as an anchor point for draw, trying to draw companies and capital together around the Internet of Things. And it's probably a good time to mention we're going to be doing a, a capital conference uh, the day before we do the third annual IoT Summit uh, in, in November of this year. So we're working towards that. 
As far as other committees go, I'm sure that by November, at the, at the next council meeting, we probably, or I'm sorry, the, at, by the November council meeting, we're going to try to get to a point where we open up, you know, some new committees as well because, A, uh, we will have six months under our belt and have started to produce an, under these committees, and, B, there's so many other people that want to get involved that now we will have the resources to begin to fan out and do some of these other initiatives. Do you want to talk about some of the other initiatives? Um, so some of them that came up, so the one that, frankly, I'm um, – is, is close to my heart just because of the role that I play would be the committee that would focus on uh, those legislative changes that we might want to think about either at the state or federal level um, that are required to foster IoT innovation. Um, there's a lot of conversations going on both at not just Illinois as a state but almost every state and the federal level around um, how we protect cybersecurity issues, et cetera, and all of those can either support or hinder IoT innovation depending on how it plays out. So that's an area that we didn't feel like we needed to take on in round one until we really sort of firmed up what our primary focuses are going to be, but they're, they're hanging out there really close in the, on the edges um, because, of, um, because of how they'll be able to either hinder our work or help it. You know, that's an interesting question, you know, and I know we have some more questions here, but I, I want to ask this question. Looking at IoT, IoT's been around for a while, and it's, the momentum has, is just starting to pick up. Do you see some hurdles in trying to get companies to really embrace what you're trying to do and trying to get them involved? Because one of the questions we have here is how do you plan to expand council membership? I mean, <laughs> that's one for the, just the PR and communications part. I want to get as many people involved in that yep. to spread the word with what we're doing. But how do you get more, you know, the hurdles in getting people to understand? Are there hurdles you see that you're right. going to have to overcome right now? Um, I don't know that we see any hurdles in getting people involved if our if our recent experience of having people just email us with the, the little bit of information we've gotten out there. Um, I think the hurdles are going to be around um, understanding that you can share information through the connectedness of IoT without um, without risking um, the security and privacy of that information. Right, that there is, you can strike that balance properly, um, and that you can write regulation and legislation that strikes that balance properly. And I think that that's going to be a very um, a delicate conversation that we have to have. Right, you can talk about privacy and security properly without fear and angst. And I think we're going to have to do that. Um, so that's a hurdle, but I think it's it's one worth jumping and uh, one that we're going to have to. Um, other hurdles? Oh, yeah, tons. Um, but let, let me just pivot off one thing you just said. One of the things that hopefully this committee will do is pay close attention to where there's already effort that has been made along these lines. So, mm -hmm. for example, the European Union um, uh, sponsored this three-year project called the IOTA, which is the IOT architecture. And in that, they contemplated all kinds of security and governance mm -hmm. issues and I would suggest that the, the amount of thought that has gone into this is probably much farther along there, but, but we can learn from that. We don't have to reinvent the wheel when, when we're doing this. Um, and, and it doesn't necessarily mean we can take that and just lay it down here, but we don't have to start from scratch. Uh, as far as other hurdles, there are all kinds of hurdles mostly associated with the fact that we're so new to this right now. Uh, like in some ways, we've been doing this forever. You know, uh, you, you know, I, I had a chance to, to speak with um, uh, a bunch of people who have been in the space from a telematics standpoint for years and years and years, who, who who have said things like, "I've been doing this for 30 years. We just called it IoT for the last two. But the fact of the matter is, the architectures are changing, and the and because the cost has come down and, and the communications links have become more straightforward, it's coming into its own. But there will be architectural issues like around the role of edge processing versus the role of going everything into the cloud. Who owns the data? So if I, if I you know, am generating data, do I own that data or does the, the provider of the, the silo own the data or whatever? All of this is going to have to be worked out. But again, hopefully the council can it maybe try to make it easier to provide a roadmap for people to understand and take steps towards doing it in a way that, that is accessible and affordable overall. 
So talk about those short-term and, and mid-term objectives you have, because I know that's what we've talked about from the council itself. How, how successful do you see those helping in advance the goals for, the, for what you have planned for the Midwest and Chicago in general? Yeah, I, I think they, as much as anything, they serve as proof points that, that we can begin to take steps forward. So things like the inventory that we're gonna do will, will actually be a very tangible lens into what is being done in the Midwest from an IoT standpoint, which is a starting point in and of itself. The webinar series and the, and the video series that will be produced, I, I think will be it, good collateral so that it'll make it tangible for people. And again, is that, a, is that a quantum leap? Absolutely not, it's a baby step, but it is a step in the right direction. And then I think the capital conference that we'll be putting together in the, in the fall will, will be yet another tangible step in the right direction, and then we build. And again, I don't, I don't believe that you sit back and you craft the, the absolute perfect answer and then it just pops out magically at the end. This is, takes work and we've got to do it one step at a time, but I think we're, we're making some good steps here. And I think by, by the fall, we will have a, a set of very good tangible evidence of steps in the right direction. Any? No, I think that that's absolutely right. Um, and I think that as we're moving through the you know, the near and midterm steps, um, the council continues to meet, you know, basically every other month, if not a little more frequently, which was another sort of exciting thing that we learned from the council. We were surprised at their willingness to come together so quickly. Um, and the focus has, you know, really remained on how can we move quickly here in the Midwest to show progress and how can we make sure we stay focused on, you know, measurable impact as we work together. So let's talk about this. Jeremy's kind of curious, one of his questions were, can you talk more about the areas you see growth in IoT? It, it, you know, that still seems to be one that everybody's interested in. We talk about it, we talk about industrial IoT, the connected car, connected health. Are there really things that maybe where we see Chicago and the Midwest really contributing or maybe just IoT growth in general? Um, I mean, I know we talked about healthcare. That's really, I think, an area that's going to be very important going forward. Um, in general and specifically here in Chicago, we have a healthcare-focused incubator, Matter, here in Chicago that um, focuses on, on healthcare technology in general, but has a specific strategy focused on, um, on IoT in the healthcare space. Um, that I think is going to show immediate growth for a couple of reasons. One, healthcare is already so data driven and when there is data, um, if you can connect it, you have IoT power. And it's, it's a somewhat easy way to state the equation and um, but I think that's going to see a lot of growth and there are already several companies over at the Matter Incubator, it's housed over at the Merchandise Mart, um, that are focused on the IoT space and I think that's just going to be substantial growth specifically here in Chicago and, and in healthcare and IoT in general. That's the area I think I would keep an eye on. Are there any surprises you've seen so far since you've launched? the ITAIOT Council that you were pleasantly surprised or happened so far that you said, wow, we didn't expect this and that you said, you know, this is really good. We're really excited about where we're going. The level of, of immediate interest and the breadth of that interest, um, the, the number of, of academics, I mean, I'm not surprised necessarily given the number of universities here, but how quickly the academics came to the table was yeah. really exciting. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think IoT is defined by how applied a technology it is. Um, so to have the ivory tower, quote unquote, come to the table so quickly, I think is really exciting and will be a defining feature of IoT here in the Midwest. The second defining feature for us, I think, is another member at the table, um, Dan O'Neill, who is the executive director of the Smart Chicago Collaborative, because his focus is how we make sure our version of IoT in the Midwest um, doesn't forget about the people who are the consumers. Um, a lot of times our IoT conversations are just about the technology and the widgets that we're building, and we forget that people actually use them. And uh, Dan O'Neill's focus is actually on the impact of technology on people. And I think that will be a defining feature of the work we do here in the Midwest as well. And, and the thing I would add is and when, when Brent and I were basically trying to put the council together 
and, and soliciting the membership. The, the people, and you can see the list, the, the, the people on the council are, you know, hold very important positions in, in, you know, a wide range of companies and don't have a lot of discretionary time on their hands. So one of the things that we thought was that we would try to only have in-person meetings twice a year, just, just as a, in reflection of those very tight schedules. And I was surprised and enormously pleased when we were in the first meeting that nobody wanted to wait until the fall to get back together, that the enthusiasm was infectious. And to get a group like that, that comes together and, and almost spontaneously agrees that this is important and let's get going on it, I, I thought that was incredibly rewarding. So how do you get more people, if people, I should try to get more, how do you get people who are, or what should people do who want to get involved in this? Because, you know, there's probably people listening right now or will listen to this webinar and say, I want to be involved. How do, what do they do? How do they get involved? Uh, they should reach out to the Illinois Technology Association through the ITA website. It's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, that's how the, most of the 45 you know, we've had a one-off, you know, I'll get an email or Brenna will get an email or whatever, but most people have contacted the ITA and expressed their desire to be involved, and, and Kelly uh, basically will coordinate any interests, and and then we reach out and have conversations with the people that want to get involved, and Kelly. many of, oh, Kelly, Kelly Fazzo, Kelly. I'm sorry, Ke Ke Kelly from well, the ITA, don't know her from right, the ITA. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> and um, and she's done a great job of, of coordinating that inbound interest. And what we'll do, Brent and I will reach out and talk to people who are interested and, and try to understand where that interest lies. And in most cases, people who have been interested are now helping out with various committees and getting involved. And that's a great thing. And I, I think we'll probably grow the size of the council itself and we'll, we'll certainly grow the number of committees and, and avenues to get involved and we welcome the involvement. Well, we're going to continue, right? We want to continue these webinars. What do we hope to accomplish with subsequent web webinars, Don? What do we want, Brenna? What do we hope to do with the next series? Because this is just the first one we're kicking off. Mm -hmm. We want, you know, as, as people are out there and they're learning about this, and we said this is the first one. What are subsequent ones we want to do so, so that people listening to these say, I can learn more about what's happening in our own city, what's happening in the Midwest, and we continue to grow the IoT. What do we hope to accomplish? Yeah, well, for starters, this should be the most boring of the webinars that we produce. That, Thanks for saying that. Um, we appreciate everyone hearing that. Well, we're, we're going up from here. No, I say that only because the webinars will begin to explore on a topical basis things like the array of things that if you don't know about that, everybody should know about that, especially in Chicago. It's a fascinating project. Uh, exploring topics like mobile health and what's going on in terms of some of the fabulous advances that are being made right here in the Midwest. Um, you know, so, so we'll run a range of, of topics from, from a variety of verticals through a variety of issues, security, governance, et cetera. And I think that it's an opportunity in a very short time window. We're going to try to keep these to about 30 minutes, including Q&A, for somebody to listen in and get a little smarter each time by virtue of having attended a 30-minute webinar. And, and that's our goal, and I think that it's a reasonable and achievable goal. And all of these will be then housed on the ITA website where everybody can find them, and we'll hope to have these on a regular basis, at least, what are we saying, uh, once a week. We're hoping to, to get these up so everybody can have them, and we'll have all kinds of So I want to thank you for being with us, Don. Brennan, thank you. And listeners, we want you to continue to give us more of your questions, and we hope to educate you, and you'll bring questions to us. If you have more questions for Don or Brenna, you can email us, and we'll ask them, and we'll give them the tough questions and make them answer us. So thanks for being with us with our first webinar on the, with the IPA IoT Council. And if you have more questions, send to us, and have a wonderful day.